Hey guys, um, July is just about done, so it's time to get to know what we're gonna be doing for August. Hey guys, if you are new here, welcome to The Book Path. I'm Nicole, and if this isn't your first rodeo, thanks for sticking around. Um, August is coming up close, so it is time to get what we are going to be doing for the month of August. Um, this is also my birthday month. Um, the kids go back to school. So it's going to be an interesting month. I am hoping that with those changes, there will be a little bit more calm in the household. <laughs> I love my kids, but I'm needing the, those few hours of calmness again. Um, you know, it's, it's one of those ones where the kids are home, the house takes a beating, and once they go back, you can finally start getting back into uh, kind of your, your routines and your plans and, and the house gets clean again. <laughs> so um, we will see how that goes. But um, yeah, August is going to be a very interesting month. Um, Magical Readathon usually takes place in August, but I know that they are actually switching it and pushing Magical Readathon to September this time, um, which is great because we have a few other things that we are going to be taking care of. So um, we won't be as overwhelmed book wise. Um, there are basically two main readathons that we will be competing or there are two main readathons that I will be participating in for the month of um, August. One is a month long readathon, the other is a week long readathon, and then there will be a few other little odds and ends towards, you know, our usuals. Um, the first one up that I'm going to talk about is Battleathon. This is hosted by Mel over at Melanor Reads. This is a month long readathon. We had this, I think, in September last year, and now it's in August this year. Um, the first go around was kind of a competition between dragon riders and who is going to lead the attacks in our kingdom. And I was on team green dragon for that one. I think we finished like third place. Um, but this time around, this is the house trials. And basically there is a world where there are four assassin houses at the house of wings, the house of snakes, the house of thorns and the house of stars. And no one knows for sure who is a member in each house. So you basically get to choose which house you're going to be in. And the house that wins will be chosen by the king to be the royal assassins, if you will. Um, so basically, this is a bracket style competition where the reading is based or, or the point system is based upon your star rating. That Obviously, this is honor system. Be truthful, be honest, not all books you're going to read is going to be five stars. So you just kind of read as much as you can. Each house has a special bonus prompt that if you read something with this bonus prompt, you will get additional points on top of your star rating points. And so I'm not going to go into the prompts for each one. I'm just going to go into the prompts for the house that I have chosen. So I'm going to be joining the House of Wings. My leaders are going to be Cassidy over from Covers with Cassidy and Bree from Four Paws and a Book. The House of Wings is described as being the charming ones. The members of the House of Wings are hidden amongst the elite. Um, we know how to be discreet and also know how to win over anyone to our side. Um, our bonus prompt is to have a book with a royal word in the title. This can be something like Herald, queen, knight, king, um, throne, cr crown, like any kind of thing that, you know, says a royal or the royal kingdom of which. Um, I ended up picking this one. <laughs> Pure honesty, I have more books with royal words in the title than any of the other prompts. So I was just going to go with if we're going for a point system and how much you can read and how many star ratings you can get out there. I'm going to go with the one that has the most options. So um, I'm going to go ahead and do that. Um, I'm not going to go into too much more with that because I don't have a set um, TBR for this readathon um, because it's basically anything as much as a mood reading, as long as it has some royal word in the title. Um, and I'm going to kind of double up and use the books with royals in the title for the other readathon, which is going to be the Literature Readathon hosted by Steph over at Steph Loves. This is kind of an all romance spicy book readathon. It used to be a book club, but now she's doing it about twice a year as a readathon. The first round was in February. This is round two, and she has designed kind of a bingo board for this one. And I'm going to try to tackle it as best I can because there are a lot of prompts on here. Um, so I did have to double up on some of these. And um, 
go from there. Um, I am, like I said, going to use as many Royal Word titles in here as possible to get some extra points for Battle-a-thon. Um, so first up, I'm going to put obviously our little graphic up here so you can see kind of what Steph has designed um, for the readathon and see kind of what our prompts are for and fill in and as we go so you can kind of not get mentally fatigued when I tell you what's what because there's a lot. Um, so first up we have our spring prompt. This is to read a book with springtime vibes or from the colors on the cover it gives you like a springtime feel. And so for this one, I have chosen Crown of Roses by Hilary Raymer. This is book one in the Faven Saga. There's going to be a lot of starts to series in this. We just can't help ourselves. So we're going to go with that. I'm just going to read really quickly what it's kind of about. Um, Cursed with the blood of her enemy, Maeve will stop at nothing to prove she's worthy of her mother's crown. Her opportunity finally arrives when the scathing, a dark fey magic, afflicts her kingdom and leaves a trail of death and decay in its wake. The only way to stop the scathing is to retrieve the soul of the goddess Danua, from within the Fae realm, Maeve's mother sends her off with one condition, return with the soul or don't return at all. But Faven is nothing like the fairy tale she's read. It's full of ancient secrets and wild magic. Determined to save her kingdom, Maeve has no choice but to rely upon Rowan, the one fairy she shouldn't trust. But as her feelings for Rowan transcend from hardened resentment to blind passion, a more sinister threat lies in wait, one ready to destroy the Fae and human worlds. Maeve must find a way to defeat it or lose both realms to the rising darkness forever. So um, I did like, obviously, the covers. On, the colors on the cover really felt, actually, the book's probably going to be over here, really felt very springtime to me with the kind of bright blues and the bright pinks. So I went ahead and chose that one for it. Next up, we have our POC author, which is our person of color author. So um, black authors, Asian authors, basically um, any minority author will count. Um, I am doubling up this prompt with the winter prompt as well. And for that, I have chosen King of Wrath by Anna Huang. Um, I read her Twisted series and enjoyed that. So I wanted to go ahead and check this one out. And it has, it's kind of glaring right now with the light, but it kind of basically has this all white cover. And for me, a white cover is like wintry and snow-like. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Um, this is the first book in the Kings of Sin series. And basically, you have ruthless, meticulous, arrogant billionaire CEO Dante Russo thrives, to con thrives on control, both personally and professionally. He never planned to marry until the threat of blackmail forces him into an engagement with a woman he barely knows, Vivian Lau, jewelry heiress, and daughter of his newest enemy, the wife he never wanted and the weakness he never saw coming. It doesn't matter how beautiful or charming she is, Dante will do everything in his power to destroy blackmail and and their betrothal. Um, the only one, there's only one problem. Now that he has her, he can't bring himself to let her go. And on her side, because I'm assuming this is going to be a dual POV, because that's how she tends to write, which I love. Um, elegant, ambition, and well-mannered, Vivian Lau is the perfect daughter and her family's ticket into the highest echelons of society. Marrying a blue blood Russo means opening doors that would otherwise remain closed to her new money parents. While the ruled elusive, while the rude elusive Dante isn't her idea of a dream partner, she agrees to their arranged marriage out of duty. Craving his touch was never part of the plan, and neither was the worst possible outcome, falling in love with her future husband. So it's going to be very interesting. Obviously, um, we're trying to keep with the royal extra royal points because, you know, we had Crown of Roses that says King in it. So we are getting some extra bonus points for battle -a there that is still in the back of our mind. Um, but like I said, it should be interesting. Um, and um, we'll see if this one's going to be a good, as good as Twisted or even better. I've heard mixed reviews on it, so I don't know which way to go on it. So next up, we have a new to you trope. She, um, Steph did say you can use a less red trope, um, which is kind of how I'm going to interpret it. And I've also decided to double up this prompt with the poll pick. Um, I put this out there for you guys to kind of figure out what I was going to do. Um, and I'm just glad with the one that you guys picked because then I was able to double it up. So I had given you guys a crown, which was for the crown of roses, which was our spring prick, um, a sword for Knight's Redemption, a puzzle for Revere Me, and a music note for the Song of Achilles. And you guys picked the swords, um, which was Knight's Redemption um, by Cherylee Gray. And this book is the first book in the Knights of Hell series. Um, 
basically you have with one fatal mistake, immortal demon hunter Lazarus started a chain reaction that set him and his five brothers on a collision course straight to hell. There's only one way to save them all, claim his mate, a sweet beauty he doesn't deserve and will only end up hurting. But immortals fall hard and walking away from her when it's over is going to be near impossible. When bookstore owner Eve Taylor starts hearing the thoughts of others, she is certain she's losing her mind. Until the day a wickedly seductive and dangerous warrior appears and introduces her to a terrifying new world, one she has been a part of her whole life and never knew. Now with the traitor consumed by darkness and driven by re revenge hunting them, they have only one chance at survival, but they must give in to the scorching desire that if they let it, could destroy them both. Um, so I ended up choosing this one because it's actually an angels and demons kind of fantasy world and romance, which I don't actually read a lot of. I have a lot of fae. I, lot of ha I have a lot of witches. I've had a few vampires, but I think... There's only been, um, like I read Talent of God, but that wasn't really like a romance. Um, the only one I can really think of that had like angels and demons, so to speak, is the, um, the shadow hunter worlds. Um, because you do have the descendants of angels and they're fighting demons. That's probably it. So it's not a prompt or trope that I, I really read a lot of outside of that one series. Um, so I thought I'd, I'd try something new. We'll see. It's not usually my thing outside of the Shadowhunter world. And that's just because the world is, is so immersive for that. Um, but we're going to go ahead and try this one for both of those prompts. So thank you to whoever voted for the poll pick. Um, thank you so much because <laughs> you guys chose the one that I could double up and prompt, you know, double up a prompt with. Um, although... I was able to use some of the others in other prompts, so we're still good. So next up, we have the um, summer prompt. And for that, I have chosen Revere Me, Fleeing from the Fake King by Lena Jubilee. This has been on a previous TBR, but I'll go ahead and I will, you know, tell you guys what it's about again. Um, you have Breck, who's waited an eon to find you. You, my bride, the other half of my soul, but I noticed you too late. Annual fate was supposed to bring... The annual feat was supposed to bring us together, not your time to shine. My need for you threatens us all. Nonetheless, I will have you. The world is meaningless without you. Love me, bow to me, and revere me. And then you have Ed and East side, which is, I was supposed to be safe. My years as an eligible maiden were behind me, so no fae should have sought my hand at the fake king's feet. Yet you caught me breaking the rules, and my fate rested in your hands. Instead of banish me, banishing me to the labyrinth of madness surrounding your castle, you vowed to let the world crumble to have me at your side. But I won't let you sacrifice everyone I care for, everyone in your kingdom for me. To escape you, I'll willingly go into the maze. I'll keep running so you never have to find me. You will never break me and I will never yield to your desires. Even though I crave you, even though when my eyes are closed, all I see is your face. So very interesting kind of premise. We're going to see what's going to go on. Um, I liked, it gave me summer vibes because it had the gold, it had the blue and it had that brown, which gave me kind of like a beachy vibe with the color scheme there. So um, I'm going to go ahead and use that for my summer prompt. So next up, we are going to combine a prompt again because, you know, we have to do that. <laughs> this is a week-long read-a-thon. I'm not reading like a whole bunch of books in this week. Um, so next up, we have our short read prompt. And I'm going to go ahead and double up with the autumn prompt. And for that, we are going to read Given to the Wolf King by Adeline Graves. This is the Fated to the Clawed Throne book one. Two kingdoms share a single curse. Can a princess and a king come together to save their people? Facing trial for crimes she didn't commit, I think it's Aoife, knows she must put her duty as a fae princess before her own freedom and leave Arain, the home she fiercely loves and wants to protect. A darkness is infecting both fae and human kingdoms alike. Only by accepting her father's command to live with the wolf king in Nairn can she discover what or who is causing it. Wanting to escape the castle, she unexpectedly develops feeling for the kings and decides to remain. Cullen knows the alliance between Aran and Nairn. I, you know, forgive me if I'm butchering these names. I'm so sorry. Protects his people, but many say the Fae cannot be trusted. With hatred growing between the two kingdoms, he does what he thinks is right and takes Aoife as his ward. While there is no hard evidence to prove her crime, he sees a darkness in here, in her. But this doesn't stop his budding feelings from the Fae princess. Faced with plotting enemies and a curse spreading, can Cullen and Aoife set aside their differences to bring their kingdoms? together in peace will they give in to their true feelings there is content awareness there's slow burn enemies to lovers and what's interesting is this is going to be a happy for now 
book, which is very interesting. I don't really see that in a lot of the books that I read. Um, so it makes me wonder if their story is going to continue, if the series is going to be um, a continuation of their story, or if it's going to be like other kind of fey world romance series where it's new couples, but it's all in the same world. So we'll see. We'll see what that is, but that will take care of those two prompts. So next up, we have our LGBTQ prompt, which is to read a book that's either written by an LGBTQ author or that has LGBTQ characters or themes throughout the book. And I figured I am going to pull a book from our Reddit fantasy bingo challenge that is still also in the background. And we are going to do The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller. I read Circe um, a while back that was written by Madeline Miller. And I just found it beautiful storytelling. The way that she writes is just like poetry. So I am familiar with her writing and love it. I am also familiar with the story of the Trojan Wars and with Achilles and with his lover Patrocles. So I'm very interested to see um, how you're going to get this kind of beautiful poetry-like romance between these two famous warriors amongst like, you know, maybe prior to the Trojan War, during the Trojan War, and then obviously with the tragedy that happens after. Um, I've heard really good things about this book. Um, so we're going to go ahead and tackle this one. And so we will have our LGBTQ prompt here and we'll also have our, re our Reddit <laughs> fantasy bingo prompt achieved. So yay. So um, we do have our next one, which is kind of our freebie prompt, and that is to take part in a sprint, which you know we're going to do because we're going to need some sprints to get through these. Um, after that, we have another prompt that is kind of a freebie, which is to treat yourself. And that is exactly what it says. Do some self-care, buy yourself something sweet, make yourself something sweet, have it, whatever, spoil yourself. So huh, we're going to have to find some little treat to do <laughs> to keep us motivated and going. Um, after that, we have a book with pink or red on the cover. And for this one, I have chosen uh, book one in the Sin series, which is Sin on a Dark Night by Rhiannon and Fuchs. And yes, they spell night like a knight in armor so we can get our extra points. But like I said, it's, it's still in my mind. We're going to get whatever we can get. Um, Nearly ready to escape the marriage I thought would be salvation, I return home to find that someone else has set me free by murdering my husband. Free if I can just stay alive long enough to enjoy it, because it looks like the vampires that killed him are still hungry and I look like a snack. On the run from one sexy sounding vampire, I fall into the lap of the most danger of the most gorgeous man I've ever seen. He says he is no better than the guy after me, but he saves my life. What's one more sin? Now I'm in a world I never knew existed. Vampires and magic are real. What seems like sin might be my only chance to survive. Besides, it's just one little bite into a world beyond my wildest dreams. So obviously paranormal vampire romance, um, spicy and uh, a short read, which we need. Um, so this one will be my pink to red on the cover because obviously it has a lot of red on the cover. Um, so we're going to go with that one. Um, now I decided to combine two prompts again, and that was to use the spinner wheel with either the Steph or friend recommendation. And so basically I put on some, um, I think it was four different choices from multiple uh, booktubers. I went through their kind of romance recommendations and put four on here. I think um, they were Deal with the Elf King, Guild, The Bridge Kingdom, and Powerless. And so the, all of those are coming from the different, um, the different recommendations. Multiple people and booktubers have recommended these. So I'm gonna go ahead, put them on the spinner wheel. We'll check it out and we will see which one we get. So as you can see, we ended up with a deal with the Elf King by Elise Kova. This is book one in the Married to Magic series. I read book two recently for the Every Romanticy um, challenge. Um, read it a little out of order, but you can because they're supposed to be standalones in the same world. But I figured, you know what, this is great. We'll get book one and that way, if we want to, we can read the rest in order. This, for my better understanding, is kind of a retelling of Beauty and the Beast and Hades and Persephone in a fey world. Um, so basically you have 
The elves come for two things, war and wives. In both cases, they come for death. 3,000 years ago, humans were hunted by powerful races with wild magic until the treaty was formed. Now, for centuries, the elves have taken a young woman from Luella's village to be their human queen. To be chosen is, to, is seen as a mark of death by the townsfolk. A mark 19-year-old Luella is grateful to have escaped as a girl. Instead, she's dedicated her life to studying herbology and becoming the town's only healer. That is until the elf king unexpectedly arrives for her. Everything Luella had thought she'd known about her life and herself was a lie. Taken to a land filled with wild magic, Luella is forced to be the new queen to a cold yet blisteringly handsome elf king. Once there, she learns about a dying world that only she can save. The magical land of Midscape pulls on one corner of her heart, her home, and people on the other. But what will truly break her is the passion she never wanted. So we'll see um, what's going on there. Um, I thought that the, I think it was the Dance with the Fae Prince was, um, it was good. It was a four star. So we're going to see how this one ranks um, as well and, and just get a little bit more into this world that they're kind of creating because it just seems like all parts and realms of the world are uh, having their own little romances here. And uh, I'm there for it. So this is going to be my spinner wheel and my stuff friend Rex. So yay for, you know, getting multiples on that. Next up, we have our new release prompt. I think this is our last actual book prompt for this. And then you have basically the freebie self care since all the other ones are taken up now. So our last book prompt is going to be a new release. And this is a book that's basically come out in 2024. Um, and for this book, I had originally chosen Once You Are Mine by Morgan Bridges, but I'm looking at it and seeing that it actually um, came out in 2023. According to this, I had read on another site, it came out to 2024. So um, I'm going to postpone judgment on this one. I might have to pick up something else and uh, see where we go from there. So guess what? We're gonna have a surprise read and go from that because apparently um, I'm getting different conflicting information and I need to figure out what is actually gonna be the new release prompt. Um, so that is going to be it for Battle-a-thon and the um, uh, Clerature Readathon, which are gonna be the two primary focuses. However, we also still have our Cocky Hero Book Club pick and for the month of August, if I haven't read any of my Leftover July books for the Cocky Hero Club, and for that matter, the uh, jar pick, our, our, our challenge accepted jar pick, and um, our uh, the magical readathons, uh, everything's just going to kind of trickle down into what we can get done in August as well, because you know we're just going to you know roll over stuff and and go from there. And so for our Cocky Hero Click for August, we are going with Scottish Player by Karen Francis. And um, this is basically a sports romance. And it says, can what happens in Vegas stay in Vegas? Taking a well-earned break with her best friend, Sam Walker would never have expected to be faced with her brother or his teammates enjoying a preseason stag party. Sam knows the single footballer mentality and didn't expect to be drawn in by the charismatic, charismatic one and only Jackson Taylor. One night, that's all he wanted, but just after one night with Sam, he knew once wouldn't be enough. Tempers and fists fly when a misunderstanding occurs that causes friendships to be tested and hearts to be broken. Can Jackson convince Sam that his days as a well-known player are behind him? So obviously we will be taking a, another book that we will see how it goes. It seems like a little bit of enemies to romance. Obviously I love the misunderstandings that causes some intrigue and tension. So we will go with that one. Um, we are still reading. We haven't at this point, I keep saying we, but, um, I have not gotten to the circle of friends for the challenge accepted jar. So I'm going to try my best to finally knock that out because it has been a while and I haven't been picking anything from the challenge accepted jar just because there's been a lot of books on the list and I'm just trying to get through those before we pick some new ones. Um, but we also are running behind on our, uh, magical readathon gear in a really um book prompts for each month so whatever's been left over from the previous months is also going to carry over to august but because the august the the autumn equinox that usually happens in august is now happening in september we're kind of reversing it because i know on the um on the forms that she's given us um august was supposed to be back to a but we're flipping it with september's and um, for both of it, I'm gonna have the same prompt for both of my characters, which is to inspect a dark, mysterious pool on the corridor floor. 
um, and that is basically to read a scary or dark book. And so for those, I am going to pick up the very, very popular Harley LaRue books and read Her Soul to Take as well as Her Soul for Revenge. Um, these are the first two books in the Souls trilogy. Um, so we'll see because if I can end up getting my hands on the third book, I might just read all three and then maybe do its own video for that. I might do the same thing with the Kings of Sin um, series as well. So stay tuned on if we get some extra videos in there or not. Um, these look like they're going to be two, two POVs. So the first one is Her Soul to Take, which is Leon, My Reputation Among Magicians is Unblemished. Killer they call me, killing is what I'm best at. One wrong move and you're dead, except her. The one I was supposed to take, the one I should have killed. The cult that once controlled me wants her, but I'm not about to lose my new toy to them. And then you have Ray. I've always believed in the supernatural. Hunting for ghosts is my passion, but summoning a demon was never part of the plan. Monsters are roaming in the woods and something agent, something evil is waking up and calling my name. I don't know who I can trust or how deep this darkness goes. All I know is my one shot at survival is the demon stalking me and he doesn't just want my body, he wants my soul. So um, these are considered dark romances. So hence dark and hor and they are horror romances. So we will see because I have tried a horror romance before and I wasn't the hugest fan, but I've heard really good things about this. So we'll go from there. Um, next up is Her Soul for Revenge. It's my understanding that these are kind of different books kind of in the same sphere. Like they're all like God, uh, gods of death or something or whatever it is. Um, but basically we have two new characters in this one and up is Juniper. After a cult tried to sacrifice me to their wicked god, I went on the run doing whatever was necessary to survive until a demon offered me a deal. Give him my soul and he'll help me claim the vengeance I seek. Blood will be spilled and the monsters I once ran from will soon be running from me. But damning my soul was just the beginning. It's my heart the demon wants next. And then you have Zane. I've been hunting souls for centuries, but she's the ultimate prize. Vicious and feral with a broken soul as dark as my own. I thought claiming her would be a simple game, but Juniper is far from simple. I choose to follow her on a path drenched with blood of her enemies, but it's our blood that may be spilled next as the ancient god wakes from its slumber. Neither of us may survive. So um, it's going to be really interesting because I've heard good things about them. They're dark horror romances. Um, sadly, no royal names on it. So we will have to see what other points we can get. But that is basically what is on the list for August so far. Obviously, whatever's left over from July is going to carry over um, because the Every Romantic Challenge is not, um, it, it, it's kind of one to take at your own pace. Um, doesn't have to be completed in a month. I just did that myself. So if I don't finish it in July, whatever's left over is going to be um, taken care of in August or any other months afterwards. We shall see. It's a little bit of chaos, you know, um, but we're here for it and we're going to have fun and see what we can get done. Um, hopefully with the kids going back to school, like I said, there'll be a little bit more calm, a little bit more time to read and just kind of like <laughs> relax. Um, but other than that, I hope you guys are doing well. I don't know when the school season starts for you, but if it starts up around the same time, I hope your back to school preparations are underway and things are going well um, and that you will be getting a little bit of peace as well when you get back into your routines um, of the school year. Um, let me know if you guys are participating in any of these readathons, what team you guys are on. Um, or just in general, what books are you looking forward to? I know there's a few books coming out in August um, that I have pre-ordered. I think once those books come in um, and once uh, the, the birthday has kind of passed, whatever has come in will all be put together in kind of an August book haul video. So that will be coming your guys' way as well. So look forward to that. But I hope all is well with you guys and I will see you guys in the next video.